Stand to it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All in heaven, we thank you right now for your mercy and goodness. Father, we bless your name because your name waited to be blessed. We thank you right now, Father. We ask you to bless those who stand in need of blessing right now. We pray especially for the mentally ill, the physically ill, we pray for the downtrodden, and those who walk the streets all night long. They don't even have a regard for your name. Father, we bless your name again, and we ask you to bless us as we make decisions here for people of this city, this county. Father, then we pray for this whole United States. 
We pray that there will be a reckoning of peace somewhere. We thank you for what you're going to do and what you've done thus far. And we bless your name. Now, in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. And just before we start our meeting, there's a few housekeeping items we'd like to share with you. And there has been a conference line set up for numbers 1 917 900 1022. Access code is 3234 7. And this is not a toll free number, and you may be subject to charges according to your long distance channel. When the chairperson opens the meeting for public comments, please follow the below instructions. If you wish to speak, dial 5, star 5. The moderator will unmute your line when it's your turn to speak and notify you by announcing the last four digits of your telephone number. Please announce your name and address, and you will be allowed to speak for three minutes. Any person wishing to address the board regarding an agenda item will be given three minutes for a comment. A commenter may speak only one time for each agenda item. And with that being said, do I have a motion? Have you all looked ahead of the consent agenda? Mr. Chairperson, yes, could I clarify one of the items before the, the board votes on the consent okay. agenda? On item number seven, I just want to point out that um, regarding the budget amendment request by the sheriff's office, that that budget amendment could be could take place after we receive the funding from the state. I think it spells that out in the request, but I just want to make sure everyone understands. Um, and Marty, I think you said that we received an executed contract today. Yes. Okay. So upon receipt of the funds from the state, then that budget amendment. If you approve it tonight, it could be contingent upon receipt from the state. Okay. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we approve the agenda. Thank you. Motion second. If we approve the agenda, is written with the necessary correction and the comments that made by our, our administrator. Are you ready to vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda. Okay. Second. Motion second. All in favor saying aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. All righty. We go to number 10. The board to receive bid for leasing of 296 acres plus acres for the parks and salt cat meadow berries in the Taylor County floor set for this date at 6 p.m. or soon after as possible. So uh, we did not receive any bids. I think this is the second time that we advertised and not received bids. Uh, if I can make a suggestion, why don't we advertise one more time and I'll make it a point to reach out to some of our local folks to see, to make sure they're aware of the opportunity. If we advertise it maybe another two weeks and give them an opportunity to submit a bid, would that be, um, would that be amenable by the board? That's good with me because, you know, if we can find somebody, I need to really reach out to the shoppers because they've been doing it for the last, what? Two, three years. Dairy market's been completely upside down. They started picking them early last year, mm -hmm. and they just messed the whole market up. So they put them in coolers and kept the young berries, and then mixed them in with the mature berries a month and a half, two months later, and it really cut the price. That might be the reason you know people's not interested in as they were in the past. You know what what I've read. There's a website that does the berries, and there's a lot of information on it. Sometimes you get a chance to look at it. You do it well, I wonder if we'll still have the problem with people. Certain people going out and getting them anyway. They get them. They get them, and they get them all over Taylor County, day and night. And the department takes them all over Taylor County. Who all takes them? The game, just the local sheriff? And 
Dang Parker and the local sheriff. Landowners, larger landowners got folks that's catching them having to reach out to law enforcement to code address. Okay. Do I need a motion to be motion to re-exercise? Okay. Second. Second. Motion to second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Go to number eleven, the board hold a public hearing set for this date at six oh five PM or as soon thereafter as possible to receive public input regarding the possible removal of the old Shady Grove voting house located in Shady Grove, Florida. Okay. Just to remind the board, this is a request just to remove the old voting house. Um, we've got obtained a picture of it for you. Uh, this is a situation where we did not positively identify this building as being on county property um, because of there was no clear transference um, because it just happened so long ago. So rather than invest $2,000 into an exhaustive title search, we just wanted to bring it to the board and see if we could receive public input to remove. Yes. And we adequately advertise this also. Yes, sir. That's right. All right, listen. And if that building is in question, you don't know who's on it and it costs us two thousand dollars to get a child search. Is that what you say? Okay. My assumption is that it <laughs> belongs to the county, but we cannot find clear title of the building or the property that it's on. But I think it's a, it's probably because of the amount of time that's passed. What do I hear? Anybody from the public? Anybody from the public want to speak to this? The motion will be demolition of the old Shady Grove voting house. If not, then I'll make a motion, uh, Mr. Chair, that we go ahead and remove that, what's left of that house. I'll second it. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Item number 13. Well, yeah, okay, the board to hold the first of two public hearings set for this date at 610 or soon after as possible. <clears throat> we receive public input and notify the public of a possible grant application for Florida Department of Parks and Recreation, Florida Recreation Development Assistance Program for ADAP for the 2023-2024 grant cycle. Yeah. Hey everybody. Oh, Hello, Hi. Melanie. Can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am. Hold on a minute. Melanie. Okay. Yeah, we still got about two minutes for 16. We got about, about two minutes. minute now. One. Yes, hold on a minute, Melanie. About a minute. Okay. Okay. Huh. We want to move ahead to, um, I think we have another public hearing after that, but then we have item 14. Next on the agenda, or do you wish to wait? Okay, we'll go ahead and report to uh, public request. Hold a minute, El Melon, then we'll go ahead and come back to you, okay? Okay. Okay. Uh, Jennifer, who is that? How do you pronounce that name? Travieso. Travieso from Disability. Is that you? No, my supervisor, she's not here. She was unable to make it. Okay, can you can you approach the board and explain <laughs> what you're asking oh. for? Surprise! <laughs> no, I wasn't expecting this. Where are y'all aware of what this village does in Taylor County? Why don't you go ahead and okay? Uh, what we do is we a non-profit drug. I mean, non-profit. I'm, I'm sorry. Can I get your name? Please? You're right, Ma. Okay, thank you. This village, we serve people in the community that is unable to get assistance for mental health and drug addiction. So what we provide them is the help to get them off the addictions. We also send them to rehab, free rehabilitation. They go to residential and move the small school kids from DCF. And we also go to the jail and get them before they get out in the community 
and we have a subsistence. So we're asking for a grant in order to eliminate a lot of the paperwork that we don't have to do it all on paper, that we could do electronically, everything for them. We could talk to them through our kiosk. So she's asking for a grant in order for us to be able to assist them with the cost. Okay, she's asking for a grant to help offset, offset the cost. Offset the paperwork that we're having to go out and do. And to do a lot of it electronically, like they, um, health care, and different stuff that we don't have to do. <clears throat> Mr. Chairperson, so this is a letter of support yeah. for the local um, support grants um, to to the legislature okay. uh, through Representative Show. Right. Do you do you have data that could tell us um, the counties that you serve Who's and there? how many how many annually how many people from each county that you serve? We serve Taylor County and Madison and Virginia. But this grant is only for Taylor County. Is that would that be available somewhere else, maybe? I think she's asking <laughs> is the funding available from another source? Is that what you're asking? No, what I'm asking is how many clients do you have from each county that you serve? Each county, I would say from Taylor County. We cover about 300 units a month. 300 a month? Units where the clients come in. So we're, at least, I said we're covering about, we have up to 100 clients from Taylor County that we're assisting. And how does that compare to the other counties? Mm -hmm. I think, being honest, Taylor County is leading. <laughs> Thank you. We're leading in the um, leading assistance for people that's on drugs and OPR. We are leading because we do get in our meetings and we're leading. Now, Leon is not with us. The only one with us is Miss Jefferson County, Madison, and Taylor. And Taylor is high in even the smoking. We have the highest rates in drugs and smoking. Taylor County. Even with our youth, because I work with the youth, and we have youth now that coming in under this program as young as 13 years old. Young what? Thirteen. Yeah. And what what kind of um, is it? Some sort of what are you looking to to get to help you with the paperwork? Well, that will help eliminate um us having to do it on paperwork, and we can keep all the information in a computer in our computers electronically. Mm -hmm. Keep the paperwork. And you're unable to do that now. Yes, we're unable to do that now because we have to do everything is done manually. We're doing everything, man. And now that we have the youth coming in, we want to keep their information confidential. That's what we know. Because we have them. I mean, from the as young as the middle school. The uh, how many employees you got down in this school? How many employees? Employees, we have six. six. Plus our supervisor, she comes. Plus our supervisor, I'm sorry. How much money are you looking to get if you can get it from, I guess, from the legislature? She did not put that on the paper and she honestly couldn't be here, but she does not have that. How much money she needs to ask people for? I don't think the paper is Okay, I'll be here. Do you all have a partnership with the Table County Sheriff's Office that? opens this line of communication or how does that process? Yes, I meet with them. I've been trying to get in touch with it. I meet with the chef for the last three months, but I did talk to Captain Chief Jamie. Jamie? That's the Perry Police Department. Okay, I talked with him and we're waiting on to hear from um, Mr. Page. I haven't heard from him yet, but prior to this meeting, I spoke with him a lot last year and he gave me the okay because I'm a certified um, correction officer. I'm a retired captain from Taylor CI. And he allowed me to go into jail to do the paperwork for them. But we can do it through the kiosk with this assistance. But I haven't been able to get a meeting with them. Okay. Anyone else got any questions for her? It, it, it really would help the community as well, you know, because. 
We can take our computer computer out because a lot of people don't want to be coming to the drug, don't want to no one to really see them coming in. There's so much stigma behind it. And we're just trying to help the youth really. I would like to see the youth get the assistance that they need because believe it or not, Teddy Hines is so they can get serious where they are with the drugs and the basic and the fitting off. They got out there last weekend. There was a fitting off, fitting off um day with a youth. Yes, uh, Lawanda, now uh, explain to us uh, how this process works. Now, I know that we are requesting uh, some things on behalf of the Board of County Commissioners. And then uh, we have one thing that we're requesting, which is the fire station. The fire station. Mm -hmm. And so then um, I guess we would have to prioritize anything after that. That's what I would recommend. Um, from my understanding, these are competitive dollars, but I don't know the criteria for how they will be considered. Mm -hmm. um, and it is um, required that all applicants submit a, a letter of recommendation from the Board of County Commissioners. So in order for, um, the, for this application to even be considered, um, they would need a letter of support. And that's for all of the applications. And we have three items on the agenda tonight for letters of support. Yeah. And that's all that we can uh, submit is three. Right? So no, I think that's why they, they recommend just keeping it to. No, um, no, no ma'am. That we talked about that before. You didn't want to turn in 10 or 12. Or Correct. That was, for, that was for a little bit different program. This is, okay. this is something a little different. So um, we were requested just to turn one project because I wanted to submit all of our projects, of course. And um, I was asked just to turn in one project. And what I don't know is if there will be more than one project that is awarded for the county. Okay, so this is a new program, so there are some unknowns. So now, I, you know, our other fire station that we're trying to, uh, we're about $700,000 short on that now. Where do, where do we request that from? Because I thought that was from the legislature also, the shortfall. The shortfall was requested from the legislature and at the last meeting, which you were not present, um, I came to the board and asked the board to prioritize the projects that we had already submitted to determine which project we wanted to submit for the local support grant program. And the decision of the board was to submit the the um, Steam Hatchie Fire Station construction um, for, for consideration. Ahead of the, um, <clears throat> the one on Pisgah. Yes, ma'am. Well, thank y'all. Mm -hmm. um, well, well, there is no reason for that. So there was yeah. discussion about using MSTU funds to fund the completion of that station. And it's, this request is for a larger uh, amount of revenue. So the other 700 would then come from MST reserves, but the board did not vote on that at the last meeting. I asked the board to discuss it during our budget workshops after the budget requests were prepared, so we could see if there was adequate funding to 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 even consider. Okay, I got it. So so for me, Mr. Chair, I would like to hear the other presenters before I could make. Okay. Well, we can start saying what who's going to fall second and third. Okay. Go ahead, Jean. Would this be from an outside entity? Would that fall? Is that, I mean, we're not necessarily submitting this to on our behalf. No. Is that going to fall? I'm guessing. Is that going to fall within our? Is that going to go against us within our request from? Possibly. Unless it's because it's outside. it's competitive. So just because it, just because it has to do with it again. Because it have a letter to support this board. Right. So it is a re but it is a requirement that any entity um, submit a letter of a request with their application, including us. And and the only way I would know for the board to to determine what is your number one project is to actually state that, and then and then we'll know if you have a preference of one project over the other. We've already prioritized our projects for the most part. Well, it's in line with what our capital plan is. Uh, 
and certainly with this degree on came forward me. But rather than not allowing folks to submit an application, you could you could sign a letter of support and designate within that letter of support. Was it one, two, or three? Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Not even if it's one, two, or three, but what your what your priority would be. So this board could, could still prioritize the request for the construction of the state house fire station. That's priority. So. Yes. If that's what you decide to do. So, Mr. Turkin, Go ahead. So going back to the uh, the fire station that we already have quite some funding, we have pledges already. And so we're fairly certain about the funding, you know, to complete it from MSTU. There is. It did look like when we reviewed the budget that there was adequate funding and reserves for equipment. Okay, because what I don't want to do is for us to lose, uh, sorry, yes, okay. Okay. <laughs> for us to, to lose what we've already been allocated. Well, and that's what we don't want to do. No, we, we don't, don't want to lose that. Again. Correct. So the suggestion, what I mean, there's really a couple of options. You can fund the remainder from reserves, or you can resubmit the application for a, a regular legislative appropriation request. Not this one, we look at that now. Correct. Okay. It came first from the regular, not the special one. Right? Correct. The first appropriation is that. Yes. Okay. So what we be asking for a shortfall to replace the shortfall or add to the shortfall? Same next on next session, yes, we would ask for the shortfall. And we have some time on that project to complete it. So that's why we went back to the legislature and asked for the balance. Okay. But I think we need to go ahead. It might be a good idea if you listen to the other group. No, that'd be very interesting. We're doing a mouth. She's going to give me an amount. Thank you. Yeah. I would like to hear the number 15. That's in line with the request. This will be the last. Thank you for allowing me to come before you tonight to request this letter of support. And since I only have three minutes, I'd like you to meet our board members. We have behind me here uh, Diane Landry, Murphy uh, Robinson, Deborah, uh, and Alfonso. And they, they support they support me, and I'm the executive director. We have, uh, I'm before you tonight requesting this letter of support for this grant that we have written. And we wrote the grant because, you know, we are in a classroom that's very old, Gladys Memorial. It's uh, devastating in a lot of areas. One roof fell in and one wing, and it has black mold, and it's just not usable anymore. That is included in this grant to demolish that, get rid of it, get rid of the liability and the danger to our senior citizens, uh, along with the grant. We put in a new parking area back there because we it is congested. Our our senior center's growing. Our people, our seniors are growing. We have more people coming, and we need that parking area for safety reasons and additional parking for anything else that we want to do in that area. Another thing that we put in the grant was a new activity room the size of the dining room now. We have the dining room that uh, suffices for what we do. We feed the clients in there. We serve the meals in there. We have our activities in there. And then when uh, the serving time approaches, they just show up their little things aside, their puzzles, their card games, and eat their food. Uh, we think that's unsanitary. It's germy. And we think we would be better off health-wise, sanitary-wise, and well-being if we 
uh, construct this new building for nothing but activities for the seniors to come into there to do their activities from 8 o'clock until 11.30, the noon meal, and then they just get up and walk into the dining room, into a nice, fresh eating facility that is clean, it's safe, and it's not hazardous, and, it, and uh, we can practice social distancing. And uh, we, we think that we have uh, applied a grant that would suffice for our needs here for some of the things, a lot of the things, but you all know we're in an old building, an old school, and uh, I wish it was where we could have gotten enough to do the whole school and just, just take care of all of it. But uh, we didn't have time to even plan to do that. But we did do this much, and we would appreciate a letter of support as we send in our grant, and uh, we just appreciate your consideration and everything you do for us too. Any questions? Any questions? Okay. Okay. Your uh, kitchen equipment, are y'all okay on that now since you got the new freezer and, and everything, you're, you're good on that? Yes, we are. We did fundraising and we had a lot of community support. We have uh, furnished Probably, I would say the majority of the kitchen equipment has been re replaced now with brand new uh, equipment. I can't think of anything new we would need to put in there right now. Yeah. But I will tell you we're growing. We have requests every day for more and more, for more people. And uh, this building that we want to construct will, will be a big, big help in taking care of our seniors in Taylor County because we really owe our seniors. A lot of us don't realize what we do owe our seniors, how they laid the foundation for where we are right now in this county. A lot of them. Um, any more questions? Okay. <laughs> well, I appreciate it and thank you for letting me speak. Okay. Thank you. 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 Does that mean that he have to go take our ranking, or does it mean he have to use his own judgment? I would. Uh, we prioritized projects before. Okay. I think it depends on the available funding, <clears throat> um, but then I would know um, if if you had a preference. Okay. Let me ask you this: How much money are you talking about? How much? You how much was the application for? You say two million. What's the fee? What, what, are we, what are we asking for on the fire station again? 1.4. Can I respond to that? We've been advised that we need to have an abatement study because of the mold and possible asbestos. And then if they find it, we've got to have the actual abatement. And that's what's driving the cost of it. Mr. Chair, yes, ma'am. My priority would be our fire station. The senior uh, center and then um, this village. I'll second that as fire heading to the senior center and the this village. I mean, I think the fire station is on the. I'm back around two or three. I don't think we need to move it now. I think it's going to be good to talk. How do we keep my case request? Good work. Any other? Fine, go ahead. What about you? No. All right, support, all right. Yes, sir. Do you need a motion? I need a motion. That's my motion. Motion second to the first fire station, second senior citizen center, third disability. That's the way we do rank going to the Jason show. Yes. But the board will sign three letters of support. Yes. So you'll each get a letter of support. We're just we're just asking for them to prioritize it. You're welcome. Okay. 
All right. Call the vote. All right. Call the vote. 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 Uh, yeah. Aye. 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 Okay, that's fine. All right, let me go back to 12. We hold the whole of the first two public hearings set for this date, the 16th of September, to receive the public input from the public of possible grant application. Melanie, are you there? She did. She's still on the line. Melody. Melody. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you now. Hello. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, this is the this is the first of two public hearings for the 2023-2024 funding cycle of the Third Act Program. Okay. I know last year the board really wanted to submit application for phase seven of the sports complex, which was the construction of the softball field. We will be required to have a second public hearing, which we have scheduled for the next board meeting. Last year the board approved um, the improvements in the amount of, we had an um, estimated cost of $442,000. The maximum we can ask for is $200,000. If you'll notice, I edited the budget to reflect all the cost increases over the past year. And keep in mind, we will not have a grant contract for this until probably, if, if we're awarded the grant, until July of 2023. And you have three years to complete the project. So. Um, you will not need the match until um, at least 2023, probably you're looking more at 2024. To be able to receive the point, how the point system works, we have to have other elements in the project. And we selected the lowest cost items we possibly could to pair up with that softball field to get the maximum number of points which was security lighting, parking improvements, picnic areas, and new picnic table, landscaping, and a nature study kiosk, and basketball court improvements. But I, I try to select the lowest cost items to keep your own pocket as low as possible and still get those grant points we need to be competitive. And I'll touch now and let you talk. Public well, here <laughs> about the FERDAP grant. <clears throat> Anyone from the public would like to speak to that? Let me ask you again, Nolan, that will the FERDAP grant is only for recreational, is that a recreational type grant? Recreational development assistance or the acquisition of land that can be used to be developed into a park or um, to extend out a park. Okay. Um, it can also be used for the construction of trails to connect to a statewide trail system. Okay. And that, while we're talking about that, that is a low point. We lose points on that element of our grant because that park doesn't connect to a statewide trail. So that's one of the areas that we lose points. We've got a, a couple areas. That's why we work so hard on getting the um, recreational point and doing everything else as correct as we can because there's a couple areas that we, we just, you know, it's beyond our control. Okay. Okay. Anyone from the club? Okay. What about both members? I have a question. Go ahead. I'm not, uh, of course, I'll say I'm all for uh, adding softball fields. But my only question is, how are we going to come up with a match of $292,000? Where's that going to come from? It would have to come from reserve for capital. How many? How much do we have in, in reserves for, for, for that, for the sports complex? 
Barry, do you know that number off the top of your head? No. We have healthy reserves now, but we also have some upcoming Restore Act projects that we need to be aware of. We have about, I think about $5 million in Restore Act projects upcoming. Those are reimbursement grants. But um, I, I better not speak to the amount we have in, in general fund reserves, but I know it's healthy. Yeah, it is. It is some of the some of the best reserves we've had. Are there any kind of in kind uh, services that could be applied to offset the two hundred and ninety two thousand? Well, remember that's not that is not a, a match that's required for this grant. It's a shortfall. It's a project shortfall, really. So we know, right, Melody? We know the project will probably cost the four hundred ninety-two thousand dollars, but the only amount we can receive is two hundred thousand. Yeah. So it's it's not, Melody. Is it is it technically considered a match? Well, it it will be considered a match. Now you can request a waiver of the match, and just for the two hundred thousand dollars. But you're not going to have a reasonable budget. I would rather, you know, go on and say we know this is going to cost such and such amount. Um, if you match the two hundred thousand dollars, it's two hundred thousand for two hundred thousand. That gives you a four hundred thousand dollar project. And we can submit an application like that as long as we match their two hundred thousand dollars. And what we say in the application, we're good. It doesn't matter what it costs. After that, it can be $400,001. It can be $500,000. From a reporting standpoint, all we'll be reporting on is that $400,000. And, and the fact is, it's, it's going to cost $400,000. We all know that. Right. That's so, and in our, in our application, We'll actually show that four hundred thousand dollar match because that is the, the or the four hundred thousand dollars is the total project cost because that gives us more flexibility on your agenda cover sheet. I showed you what the real costs are probably going to be based on real estimates. We all can. We can't build the softball field for two hundred thousand dollars. Right. Did we? Did we have this? Added as one of our, at one point we had this on our legislative appropriation. We did. And we took it off because we agreed that we would get the $200,000 card out and then we would finish it up in our reserves. So I, I believe this project was submitted twice, uh, right, Melody? And was not funded either time. It was, yes, it was submitted last year for the $442,000. And last year, the board approved the application for the $442,000, which we subsequently could not submit because we had an open grant on the sports complex. Correct. We still have one there, right? We got well, it. We, we are closing that grant out this week. Um, we have worked very hard to get it closed down. Jamie is hand carrying all the closed out documents to the FERDAP people this week because they told us we had to have everything submitted by July 15th. Tonight we are approving bills to um, cut the checks for what we needed to take to the FERDAP people. But we, as far as the grant standpoint, we're ready to go. Now, if the FERDAP people come and do an inspection, which I don't know how it could happen because we did everything exactly as the contract and said, well, we got a problem with this. Um, we're not going to have it closed down by the grant has to be closed down, inspected by the burnout people, and approved by grant by the grant submission deadline, which is August 30th. But on our end, we did everything we possibly could. And like I said, Jamie's going to actually hand carry it to the burnout people so that they have it in hand by the date they gave us for us to be eligible. Well, I'll tell you something else. Well, if we 
to admit this. And there's not enough money. How long do we have to get this money up in order to do that? We have three years, right, Melody, to construct? You actually have four years for right now because you won't know, you won't have a contract till next July. Because that, at the beginning of the state fiscal year is when we get the contract. So you'll have a contract next July, and then you have three years to complete the project. So you're actually looking at four years okay. from today. Okay. Now, with that said, if, if you want to submit a grant application for $200,000, request a waiver of match, get it approved, you can, you can do that. But like I said, if you want to submit a realistic budget to them so that they know that we, you know, that we can effectively manage the project and we know the cost. What do I hear? You will come in. Well, it's a it's a public it's a public hearing. This is public. Anyone from the public? We close the public hearing out. Okay. Any more board members comments? Do I hear a motion? Did we submit? Motion, okay. a motion to approve. Do we have another public hearing? You would just need to approve. Yes, yeah, I need, forward. I need your, I need approval. Um, if you want to do this project to move forward with the second public hearing, which we have scheduled at your board meeting next week, due to the grant submission timeline. All right. Then this, then this approval means we need to vote. Yeah. I'll make a motion to move forward with this project. Thank you. Motion second, all those favor saying aye. 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 Okay. Okay, thank you everybody. I'll be um, back next week um, and we can determine what budget amount you want to submit at that time. Um, and like I said, with those figures I gave you tonight, I'm just trying to give you a realistic budget. Whether you approve that for the grant application or not, it doesn't matter. You, you okay. still, you know, you're still going to have to have the match money okay. from the board. Right. We go back to 13. Thank you. 13. The board to hold a public hearing set at this day is 6 15 p.m. or day after or as soon as day after. The adoption of resolution authorizing the exchange of real property with the Clouds properties of Taylor County LLC in association with the properties from Dead Man to Realignment Park. Is all that on the agenda? All that on the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> a lot more than what's in my title. Okay, so this is, as it stated, is kind of trying to bring some completion to the acquisition that was necessary in order to do this dead man's curve line. If you recall the interior parcel that was right in the center of the, of the curve, a portion of it is outlined in orange. Um, it goes all the way up to where the dead man's curve is now. It's kind of that diamond shaped piece of property. It was acquired uh, some time back from the, we call it the Nemeth property. Once we uh, finished that one, we needed to move forward then with the highlighted areas that are yellow, as well as the uh, one at the very top northwest, which is green. <clears throat> and what you're seeing there is this completes the corridor, as well as exchanges some portions that we need for Realignment of Adams Beach Road, and then some abandonment of extraneous portions that uh, would no longer be needed. <clears throat> if you recall on the Nemeth acquisition, that was a physical purchase. Um, and we went through that and finally got it closed. When we did this, when I started looking at the properties and the overall sizes of them as they related to each other, and got to thinking, well, we acquired all of the Nemeth property, but 
you've got a portion there that's highlighted in orange that's going to kind of be um, an, an inset to the park property. There was the green area there that would no longer be needed that was currently owned as rice of land. And then, of course, the, the yellow on the, um, the western side was some additional right away that we needed in order to make Adams Beach Road kind of tie in a little better. And when I went through the sizes of it, I only thought, well, what if we were to just suggest maybe we just exchange this? Because the square footage of this came within a tenth of an acre mm -hmm. on what we were considering what we wanted versus what we were considering, hey, we can offer this to you. Uh, fortunately for us, the park, the park um, representative said, yes, we are in agreement with this. So we've gone through this. Uh, there's been some title issues. Those have finally been worked out. There are two contracts that are attached to the item that you see before you today. Those embody the transfer um, that's allowed under 125.37. And we are suggesting today that we um, request approval of those contracts with the understanding that the only cost that we're asking you to incur at this point in time is the title search and some closing expense, which I think I've listed as, I remember it was $2,300. Mm -hmm. So that's the, that's the nuts and bolts of changing all these properties around. That would be our final cost. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is the public hearing, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. This is the public hearing talking about the dead man could. <clears throat> is there anyone from the public would like to speak to or for or against the dead man uh, straight? Is that good? Go ahead. I just like to tell you how far y'all doing that. But I also want to point out, you got San Pedro Road and Robert Say Man. Don't forget those curves need straightening too. Those are two dead man curves too. Okay. You move from the public to like the same time. Okay, we will close the public hearing. And it's now council member time. Anyone from the Kenneth, could you could you point out the what the land that we're swapping? Do you have a pointer? Yes, I, I don't, but that's why I color coded it where to make it a little easier. So the the yellow properties that are outlined in yellow, there are two on the curve and one on the west side. Those are being acquired. <clears throat> that's here, here, and here. Yeah. That's the properties that we are obtaining. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The green property and the orange property are the two segments or the two sections that we are transferring to the Clark ownership. Okay. So we are really taking the point out and making a, uh, a slow curve out of that? Is that what we're doing? And that's within a tenth of an acre. That's within a tenth of an acre. It's 4,000 and... Uh, 94 I believe, square feet. Okay. We are making, we are taking the sharp curve that's here yeah. at Dead Man's Curve today, yeah. and we are making it into a posted 45 mile per hour curve. So I can design it for 55. I couldn't design it enough and avoid some of the title issues of some adjacent properties to have it posted at, at 55. So we'll put a, uh, an advisory plaque up there that tells you regulatory plaques are, are black and white. The advisory plaques are the yellows that tell you you need to slow down to 45 mile per hour to go through this. Um, it will be, of course, super elevated and we will, I, I intend to put paved shoulders on it to help um, offset some of that lane departure issues. So we, we will make it as safe as we possibly can in the area that we have to work with. Okay. Thank you. And that's still within the set costs that we've already discussed. That's correct. If you remember this, um, we have to acquire the properties, and DOT was um, gracious enough, I guess is a nice word, to offer to support the construction cost of that. So we gave them an estimate some time back. This 
at that point in time would fit in that parameters. Um, obviously, costs have changed some. So hopefully they understand the importance of it. We will definitely try to reiterate that and um, try to strive for them to support the full cost of it, no matter what that may be. And that's contingent on the closing. So. The closing will be finished once we um, execute these two contracts. Uh, and then Conrad will finish that process out. That then gives us ownership of the corridor. My next task would be to, to request a proposal for surveying. I'll bring that guy back to you guys and say, this is to get a topo of this area so that I can begin my design. Are right, we talking about 2,300 bucks? Right now it's $2,300, yes, sir. There's a resolution too here. Yes, okay. Motion to read a resolution of all. Motion second, all the way to say aye. Aye. The resolution of the Board of County Commissioners, Taylor County, Florida, authorizing the exchange of certain properties owned by Taylor County, Florida, with certain properties owned by Clark Properties of Taylor County, LLC, a Florida Limited Liability Company by D. For Taylor County, Florida, <coughs> a project on the Beach Road located in Taylor County, Florida. All right. Mr. Chair. Yeah. Um, can I, so the process then is that we close out on the the, the contracts for the land yes, and then you'll order a survey yes, and then after that's done then we'll submit to funding from FDOT is that the right so I'll get a survey I'll finish the design I'll do a cost estimate on based on the quantity takeoff I'll submit that to DOT for approval of the design as well as the cost components and then we will chances are they're going to wind up doing either one of their funding mechanism agreements i'll bring that back at that point in time so that there is a funding mechanism so you'll have to have a separate approval for whatever the cost is okay. even though they're it's, i don't know if they'll do it as a scrap stop type project i'm hoping they won't so that it's not a competitive type thing but you know, it'll, it'll be embodied in some type of an agreement. Yeah, that, that's okay. where I was going, is that, <clears throat> you know, if we're going to have to prioritize this and if it was going uh, to have to be put ahead of something else or... But no, you, you know, we never... Separate deal. That's right. It was never characterized as, <clears throat> we'll fund this, but you're going to have to push these right. back. And, you know, the people that were there, um, you know, they're still understanding it. Because they, they promised us. <laughs> yes, ma'am. And you know, I will I will be very diligent in trying to um, get as much as we can, of course, without affecting our other projects. I know you will, and I, I really appreciate what you've done on this project. This is near and dear to me, uh, and you've done a really good job. So, if you're ready, Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion that we adopt. The I wasn't resolution. doing it alone, but no, just be again? I said I wasn't doing it alone. There were other other kind of things. A couple of helpers, yes, sir. <laughs> okay. What do I hear? A motion to adopt the resolution. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Is there a roll call? All in favor say aye. Uh -huh. just, just one other thing I'd add to what Kenneth said. Uh, the, you know, we're getting title insurance for the property that we're getting, and it's just handled by, that's part of this cost that you, that, that the $2,300. And the, there'll be deeds, cross deeds back and forth that, that have to be prepared. They'll be prepared by the person who, in fact, did the title work, which is um, uh, the Curtis Law Firm. So there'll be, there'll be a deed for you to sign and a deed for them to sign. And this contract seems like there's money being exchanged, but it's not. The title company always requires a contract to buy and a contract to sell. Mm -hmm. It's just the way, you know. That's just the way they do. That's why we had to do it. Yeah, so you'll see values in there of the properties. But you don't worry about it. That, that it's not a material exchange of costs. We we use that based on, or we extracted that number based on the appraisal that we did before, based on the quantity of acreage, and then just extrapolate that. Is that called the nature of the beast? Something like that. <laughs> Governmental red tape. Wow. Yeah. Did we complete that? We did, but we need also need a motion to approve the contracts to okay. motion. Great. Motion second. All in favor say aye. Is that is that for the chair's signature? Second. 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 Second.
subscribe to the um, CBS 50 as a direct secretary of change. Um, I think it's the chairperson. Yeah, so, so we're. Um, well, I know that the last time we executed a contract like this, it was the chairperson signed and okay. initial. Just so that everybody's aware, that's what's going to be signed. That's signed. Mm-hmm. Ain't no chance of going jail behind that, is it? No, not on this one. There's other ones that you signed. You got a really good lawyer over there. He's he got it. Okay. Well, can all right, I think, I think number 16, is that what we got? Yes. The board took into the appointment of two regular members and one alternate member and a one, one citizen member to the 2022 Bay Adjustment Board and to appoint chairman of the same as agenda by the clerk. Is that yeah. okay? So we need... Um, we need you guys to appoint a chair, an, another member, and then also an, an alternate member in case one of those two can't be there, and then also a citizen. To the Bay Adjustment Board. Now, for the citizen, that's always been Wallace Holmes. Does anybody know if Wallace is still interested in doing that? I, I don't. I don't know. He has, I would he assume that he is. That he has, I would think he would be too. because yeah, he's done it for so long. So, yeah. I would say for the citizen. Wallace Holmes. If he tells us he doesn't want to do it, then we'll, then we we'll have to come back it. and change it. And then, um, who has not done the uh, value adjustment board before? Anybody? Uh, oh, I've done it Have y'all new new members done it? Uh, I think Jim was the chairman last year. Yeah, I was. Okay. You haven't done it? You haven't done it either? I served this year. I was the chairman. You need to be chairman. And yes. Okay. And how many? Now that's two we've got, and the citizen, right? We've got two members from the board and the citizen. You said you did an alternate. Did an alternate? Yeah, I'll be all. Okay. All right. Do we need a motion second? Yes, we've got Mr. Uh, Commissioner Newman as the chair, Commissioner English as the other. Mr. at the alternate, and then uh, Mr. Wallace on the citizen if he agrees with yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Who's, who says that's good to left? I do. Yeah. So I'll, I'll let y'all know when we have time coming. I'll okay. Do we need a motion to second to that? Yes. Need a motion? Motion. Second. Motion second. All in favor of saying aye. 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 Okay. Go to 17. Board to consider approval or request to appoint board of county commission member to fill in do it the absence of the supervisor of election as agenda by Dana Sutherland, supervisor of election. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you for allowing me a spot on your agenda. I am here to ask that a board member be appointed to serve in my place at one of our canvassing board meetings. My son will be graduating from Navy boot camp on August the 26th, and I want to be there. So there is a canvassing board meeting scheduled for Thursday the 25th at 5, and I need someone to sit in my place at that time. It can't be me or Jim. So. It cannot. <laughs> and, and it can't be um, either one of you because you're candidates. And it can't, um, Commissioner English and Commissioner Newman are already serving on the canvassing board. So that really just leaves Commissioner Dim <laughs> to be appointed. Okay. I'm already here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey. And I, you, I will have everything laid out and ready, and my staff will have all the paperwork. August 29th? The meeting will be August the 25th. That's a Thursday afternoon at 5 o'clock p.m. That'll be the only meeting that I will be at. You're going to tell them to take the, uh, the course? 
um, he will get a phone call from me tomorrow if he accepts it. Yeah. <laughs> there is a course that you'll have to take um, for signature verification, but I'll, I'll get with you on that. And we'll it's we'll lots make that of fun. happen. It's it, lots it of fun. You'll enjoy fun. it. <laughs> Do you need a motion? Do you need a motion? Go ahead. I make a motion that we nominate Commissioner Phipps to fill in for the Supervisor of Elections on August the 20th. Yes. Yes. Second. All the votes in aye. Thank you very much. I'll be in touch. Okay. Okay. Item 19. Thank you. The board to consider approval of temporary construction easement agreement and adoption of authorizing resolution. I, I believe you skipped number 18. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yeah. County to the county attorney to discuss proposed notice of referendum election. Is that you, Mr. Bishop? That's me. I was sitting there at my office minding my own business and I get a letter from um, Ms. Angela Ball, attorney for the school board, telling yes. me what I had to do. Okay. And I thought to myself, hmm, do I want to do that? So in response to that, I decided I would do what Ms. Ball told me to do. And I sent Lawanda a letter from from Miss Angela, um, a copy of the school board's resolution, and a proposed notice of the rever uh, referendum election. We've done this before uh, to, for them to um, get a mill of 0.25. I think that's what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. point, you know, a quarter of a mill. They passed a resolution, and then it has to be. Uh, Put on the um, on the ballot, and of course the ballot has to be given to uh, uh, Honorable Dana so that it can uh, be on the ballot. And if you look at the Exhibit A, there's the the uh, what they did. So in essence, is we're doing what they're requesting, but ultimately it's citizens of our county to decide whether you go through or not. Whether it's, not. it's not whether you know y'all do it so somebody starts ripping and snorting at you about that just say no it's up to y'all you know as um, people who do vote to determine whether they're going to get the, the extra it's all off my boat so it's all by secret ballot okay so just approve it with a motion. 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 motion second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, uh, okay. That'll go before the public. So we're not endorsing anything. Yeah. We're just saying, yes, we're okay with you putting it on the ballot. Yeah. For the citizens uh, to decide. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to make that clear that uh, y'all aren't doing that. It's um, school board's asking for it. And Y'all are saying okay for it to be on and, and let, let our good people who vote in Taylor County decide. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We go to 19. The board to consider approval of temporary construction easement agreement and adoption of authorizing resolution with the Florida Department of Transportation. FDOT is agenda by the county administrator. The replacement of Dennis Howell, the bridge on Dennis Howell Road over Warrior Creek Bridge is scheduled to be constructed in 2024. Uh, so FDOT is asking for um, the, a 39-month construction easement and a resolution for the replacement of Dennis Howell Bridge over Warrior Creek. Well, I mean, is that... That's the number that they've chosen to give them an opportunity to complete the design work and then move forward with the construction. Three years, three months. Yes, sir. Yeah. I found it rather odd. 
I saw your letter on there, and I'm like, yeah, I guess that's a little different, but okay, I mean, I don't have an issue with that. I'm going to read the uh, resolution by Tyler Allen. Motion to check. Read resolution by Tyler Allen, Mr. Bishop. It's got a lot of blanks and it doesn't have a title, so I'm going to read the first paragraph. Okay. okay. Whereas the state of Florida Department of Res Transportation proposes to construct or improve County Road, Dennis Howell Road, section 38,000 FP number 4374231 in Taylor County, Florida. Motion approved. Motion second to approve the resolution. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. And then if you approve the resolution, you need to um, approve having the chairperson sign the temporary easement for that 39 months. We may be still around in 39 months and we may not. Okay. Motion okay. second for the chairperson to sign. Okay. All the table say aye. Okay. Got it. Okay. Number 20. The board for continued discussion regarding the county owned lot located at Keaton Beach is agenda by County Ministry. This is the continued discussion, um, including, or excuse me, just addressing the smaller of the two lots on Marina Road. If you recall on June 6th, the board voted to set the minimum price for the lot at $58,000. I did communicate this with the adjoining property owner, the adjacent property owner, there's only one, reset the clock for an additional 10 days to give the initial life an opportunity to respond. And we did not receive any type of proposal from the adjacent property owner. I did reach out to him just to make sure that he understood that he had 10 days and he did inform me that he did not intend to submit any type of bid for with the price of $58,000. So I would like our county attorney to explain to us what the possible next steps are. There's, there's several obvious next steps. Of course, the, you could do nothing and leave it as is. You bring a copy of the statute. It's in the packet, do you need it? Yeah. Should be the last two pages. I don't think it was in mine. Yeah, here it is. Okay. I'll tell you what, um, folks. This statute, I always talk about a Philadelphia lawyer being able to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, it must be, have to be a real smart Philadelphia lawyer. <laughs> and then, and then he has to come back from the Delta in Mississippi to figure this one, figure this one out. Okay, so what happened in this, did you see the whole statute here? It's 125.35. I know it's 125.35, I'm looking for the proper part of that. Um, okay, all right, it's subsection two, okay? Um, and it says that we've done what it says is it's determined that the board, that the parcel is of use only to one or more property owners, the board may effect a private sale. So you could effect a private sale because there was only one adjacent landowner. But if you recall, uh, the um, fair market value of the property is $58,000. Y'all recall that? Mm -hmm. Okay. The board may, after sending notice of its intended action to owners of adjacent property, see that's plural. Well, there's only one adjacent owner. Uh, by certified mail, effect a sale and conveyance of the parcel at private sale without receiving bids or, or publishing notice. Well, um, the gentleman doesn't want to pay the $58,000. Within 10 days after receiving such notice, two or more owners of the nation property notice the board of their desire to purchase. Well, there are no more, two or more adjacent property owners that even notice us of their intent to purchase, okay? The board shall accept seal bids for the parcel from such property owners and may convey such parcel to the highest bidder or may reject it. But it doesn't go any further. <laughs> the statute doesn't go any further, which it should say, well, if the adjacent owner does not want to purchase it, then you ought to be able to advertise and sell it. Being but it doesn't say that. 
Okay? So, and then it says, so, can you take the bull by the horns and say, well, uh, your lawyer said that it didn't say that, but anybody with half a grain of sense would figure out that that would be the way to do it. Okay? Or, what you could do is you could just say, look, the adjacent owner doesn't want to buy it, so we're just going to leave it now and just leave it. You know, this small piece of property. There is another alternative, though. If you look down at uh, subsection 3, as an alternative to 1 and 2, the Board of County Commissioners may by ordinance prescribe disposition standards and procedures to be used in selling and conveying new real or personal property. So you could say, okay, let's just go and, um, and, and pass our own ordinance to determine how you sell. Okay? And there might be an argument that if you do that, you might be doing ex post facto because of after what you've already done. So that's another problem uh, in this situation. So what, you know, you foolish old man, what are you saying? <laughs> what I'm saying is number one, um, you could uh, say, you know, we're going to advertise it. Let's just sell it and, you know, somebody doesn't like it, then they can do what they want to do. Secondly, you could say, okay, I'm washing my hands of this, you know, let's just wait and see what happens. Something might happen later on. That way you wouldn't get any trouble. Or third, you can tell, tell me to pass an ordinance to determine a different way to do it where it says, if there's only uh, one adjacent owner and that adjacent owner doesn't want to buy it, then you sell it uh, by um, seal bid with the minimum, I'm assuming that you would want to do it with the minimum price at $58,000. You know, then you can reject, you know, if somebody doesn't want to sell it, want to buy it, being fair to this other fellow that this is adjacent. I'd like to say something about it. Go ahead. This whole this whole thing about these two lots, <coughs> these each came up because the fellow was wanting to unload his crab traps on that lot that we're talking about now. I give him access to unload his crab trap, and this whole thing started that way. I think we need to give him a chance, and everybody else in the public a chance to, to buy that piece of property if he wants to, for, to unload his crab trap. That'd be his business. You know, or if anybody else thought that they could do anything to him to with it besides they said it wasn't big enough to build a house on, but it was big enough to, to use. They could build a floating dock, they could park their boat there, they could, you know, back the trailer in there, whatever they wanted to do. But they uh, that's my, my opinion of the thing. One question, if I could. Yeah. Is there access from the county right of way given that guardrail? That would allow the use of that property without crossing this neighbor's parcel. Did you look at it? Real quick? I have looked at it. Did he show you where his corner was? He didn't show me his corner, but it well, looks very, very. It's You state. can make a trailer and a truck in there between that light pole and, and, and the guardrail. I mean, okay. I mean, I mean, it, it just looks to me like it's very, I very close. I haven't looked at the survey marker, but I haven't looked at the survey marker since they surveyed it. But I'll, I'll, I'm pretty sure there's room there. They told me there was room there. He just didn't want nobody to pull over on his property and you know, turn it around or anything. What he said to us that night. Well, what would happen if it was surveyed and then he put a he put a fence or a post up there and then it didn't give enough of space because right now I mean we're mm -hmm. kind of guessing if there's enough of space no. or not. Have you looked at it since the survey? I haven't seen the survey. Uh, okay. All right. They did survey it, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? It's been surveyed recently? I'm not. We didn't survey with it when we surveyed the other lot. I, I didn't see any the markers, what I would say. I'm not saying they're not pins there. They could be, I just didn't see it. But I mean, I know there's been discussion about access and, and his lack of 
Sorry, I should say a willingness to allow people to cross his drive or his guard. Right, right. Because of that guardrail and, and the restriction that's there for space. Well, he, what you say is he said his property went all the way to the guardrail? I'm not telling you that. I'm right. just saying I don't know that there's adequate spacing for that necessary use. I, I, I haven't seen a measurement on you know, the footage from yeah, me, me that pavement to that that location and that access. But I remember him saying that that nobody without turn there wasn't room to turn around there without getting on his property, but coming off of off of Bay Road itself, there was room to back what I'm making it, I understand. But we would have to get it surveyed before we could sell it anyway. I mean, that would be I, I thought that was part of the title search. It was. I just couldn't recall it. Okay. But, but I didn't see any markers when I was there. I, I doesn't mean they're not there, but I, I didn't notice them. Mr. Moody, is the road wide enough there that you can you can pull in a truck and a trailer without getting onto the property across the street? So if somebody buys that larger lot and, and fences it, would there's I mean, can you can you navigate? It looked like to me you could pull in on the road right in front of the other lot that they were selling and back straight in there on that lot to me. What it looked like to me now, to get back the trailer in there. I mean, this is Jim. I'm back to where I've always been. I just don't feel like that we should be selling or getting rid of any county property that has access to the Gulf. There's so few um accesses and we own something that has access and i think that we need to hold on to that i think the amount the argument that it would bring in on additional ad valorem taxes well yes it will but i'm not sure that the ad valorem taxes and i think we discussed that one time would be very little uh, in comparison to what we're giving up because at some point in time we may need that that uh, piece of land. We may want to uh, do something else with it. I just hate for the county to give up access to the Gulf. Well, what, you, what you're saying is I was, a man wanted access to the Gulf where he could unload, his, load and unload his boat there. So you're saying let's give him access, let him use that lot and kind of keep it. No, that's not what I'm saying because if you recall, what, what started this was whoever, and I don't even know who the man was, okay? I, I have no idea. But whoever the person was obviously had a bunch of crab traps and things. And I got a lot of calls from a lot of people in that area. And they were opposed to that because they, they, they felt like that having a lot of crab traps loaded and unloaded and staying there would devalue their property. In addition to that, that it would interfere with their quality of life because of the possible odor that comes from it. That's where all this came from, was the objection from the landowners. And I even got calls all up and down the canal from people because they said, I wouldn't want this to happen at my property either. And I'll be honest with you, yes, we, we own property down there. And I, you know, I, I would not want an operation like that next to me. There have been lots down there that have been available for sale. So if somebody really wanted to have a business of some sort, they've had an opportunity to go buy land for sale down there and you wouldn't have to go into all of this. Well, is it going to be big enough? Is there going to be rent <laughs> apart? Is it going to offend the neighbors? Is it going to devalue the property? That's, that's where I'm at. So to answer your question, um, I, I don't think the public in general would want an operation like that like right in their neighborhood. It's the same as, it's a neighborhood there. No, we got a boat ramp down there they can't use, and, and they're, they pay taxes just like the people that live down there and everybody else in Taylor County. And then uh, he ought to be able to unload his crab trap somewhere, you know, if, if, he, if he's a citizen and he needs to be able to use something down there to unload it. Yeah, but most people that want to have a business they go about, well, okay, what do I need to operate my business? Do I need a place to back up and unload? Okay, that's what I need. Well, I need, to, I need to be looking for property to buy so I can have my business. I'm not looking for the government to let me unload for free necessarily. 
um, a, a businessman would be looking for what all I need. I need this, that, and the other, and yes, I need a little piece of land. He wanted to buy it, and that's what he I'm not talking about public property, though there's been other property that they could buy without going into all this, and where we have to give up the very few pieces of access to the Gulf that we have, and then potentially an undesirable um, operation be placed there. Yes, Amy. I would be in support of advertising to the public to sell. I mean, given the size of the property, I know we say that there's not in any county property that we have to just hang on to, but given the size of the property, it's how many years we've done nothing with it. Um, and we can't even think of an idea of anything that could be done that's feasible to get done with this property. Um, you know, we've got Talking about a guy running an oper rock operation and degrading value of folks probably. I was in that, I was over at the beach weekend before last and I did go over and look and I think the owner's concern was more of if someone did get over, you know, on his property with a truck or a trailer, and I think there is adequate distances there for someone to come and go. But I mean, being at the beach going out of that canal, there's already a business down there that's got Go out of that canal, go by the tramp boats. That's all I smell. I mean, three houses down, that's all I mean, that's all I can smell. That's all I can smell. It's, it's dead fish. So, uh, I mean, I'm in support of Mr. Moody here. I just, I just like to point out, if you, if you do what you're suggesting, you're opening the door. Just like with the golf carts. He told the people down there to ride golf carts down there at the beaches. It was a fine idea. They ride them all over the county because they're doing it at the beaches. He made him park his crab traps down there on that property. And everybody else going to want to park theirs on that property. He should have a place to put that to sell. Okay, but now, if you advertise it for sale, it don't have to be a crab and buying it. It could be somebody else. Right? You can't advertise it just to the crab. Right? Yeah, you can't advertise it just to the crab. Can you? He should be able to find a place to put his stuff where he that's, is. That's him. When I, I suppose you have to have a business license or something like that to do that. Oh, yeah, he's a commercial traveler. He's got a lot. I just had a question. Did, did we not have a public hearing? Did we have a public hearing on this matter? <coughs> I don't remember. Um, do you remember? Like we had a public hearing. I think we did because yeah. we had a lot of people. Uh, yeah, I think we did. The, I recall a lot of people called in. Right. Most of the people in that neighborhood were against it. Was it against selling the land or selling the crap? They were against. I, I think the question was utilizing that property to maybe to lease to the crabbers. Was that is that correct, Commissioner? Maybe? Well, we, we talked about leasing it. We talked about just letting them use it, being it was public property. You know, we talked several different things about it. All he was doing to start with started this whole conversation in the beginning. Was he just wanted to go there several times a year and load and unload his trap traps? Once he gets them in the go, he brings he brings the whole thing in. He unloaded them in and be bait for the trap for the rest of the season. And then he then when the season ended, he'd be pulling them out to go. I mean, it wouldn't be like there'd be a big bunch of trap traps stacked up for all the time. But if a man bought a lot. He could stack anything he wanted to up there anytime he wanted to, and that just would be, you know. I just hate, I hate your, a commercial crapper has not got a place down there to use. I mean, and he was trying to eliminate, trying to fight the crowd at the boat ramps, trying to do that, you know. From what I recall, the, the question about just allowing a commercial business to use public property was that, that that may be a potential conflict, that you really would want to enter into some type of lease agreement. Is that correct, Conrad? Yeah, and the board decided they didn't want to do that. After the public hearing. Yeah, I after thought. the public okay. hearing. Yes. But you can sell it to anybody who wants to, right? Uh, advertise it. And whoever may. So the question is, do you, do you, you know, what do you wish to do moving forward? Do you wish to, to, advertise and sell with a minimum bid of the $58,000? Or, or do you wish to wait? Do you wish to not take action? I, that's, the, that's the guidance I'm looking for. I'd love to sell it at that price value or try to put it up for sale at that price value. 
And somebody might not even be a driver in my life. They might want to just have a place they go flip and dog, go there, park their truck, and go fix it. You know, I mean, it'd be used. It wouldn't be just sitting there. I make a motion to that. I second it. Motion second. All in favor saying aye. 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 Opposed. You don't have to be a cracker. It could be anybody. Yes, all right. All right. The advertisement would be that the minimum bid, the minimum bid, right. minimum bid, could take that the right to, to reject all bids. Right. Minimum bid. Right. So I got a question, Conrad. Of course, we wouldn't have the votes to do it, but you could, I guess, pass some sort of ordinance or something that would prohibit certain things from going on that uh, piece of property, right? Are you talking about uh, some covenants is what you're talking about? Yeah, that would say, you know, like things that are offensive, like crab traps could not be put there. Could we do something? We don't have the votes, obviously, for that, but that could be done, right? Yeah, you can sell land with covenants on it for a certain period of time. You know, um, for instance, uh, when you have a, a subdivision, and the subdivision says, you know, the house that's being built on it has to be 1,000 square feet. You follow what I'm saying? You can't put a house with 950 square feet on this, on this. Conrad, would that require a land use change for that parcel? More than likely, yes. So that would be, that would, that would be an, at least an additional step. Yeah, but like Ms. Beagle said, I don't have the votes on that one. Right. Okay, you want to try to sell it fifty thousand dollars. Okay. All right. Go to twenty one. Board to consider approval of letter of support for the local support grant program for the appropriation of construction of a new fire station in Steam Hatchet as agenda by the county administrator. So I already received guidance from the board. My only question will be if you wish for us to add a sentence to the letter that's in your packet that um, identifies this project as being priority for Taylor County, or if you wish just for me to notify Representative Show's office. The question I the language. Okay, motion and second. All the good saying aye. Aye. Anything else? Uh, just under informational items, I just want to um, point out to the board of our very busy schedule. The last two weeks of July, Marcia's updated the calendar for you, for you. Um, so you're aware of that. Um, the next, uh, the week of the 18th and the 25th will be quite busy. And I also wanted to remind the board that if you wish to serve on a Florida Association of Counties legislative committee, policy committee, excuse me, that I need to know as soon as possible. Um, this will require the attendance at two conferences, one in September in Miami-Dade County and one in November in Pinellas County. And um, I would need to know probably by tomorrow if you wish to serve again. That Several of you served last year. Those are one-year appointments. Um, I just want to remind you that I need to know if you're interested pretty quickly. Okay. And that's all I have. Thank you. I have a question. Did, <laughs> I, did I understand correctly that when you send these letters of recommendation, you're going to put on your recommendation for Taylor County Commissioners that you want yours prioritized? Is that what was said? That's what you said that's right yeah but you would you're going to prioritize yours yes but you'll still receive your letter of support oh yes yes i understood that but i understood you're going to prioritize yours we'll prioritize them all one two and three yeah that's what they voted on but i was not going to put that language in our letter i was only going to add the sentence that the fire station would be considered priority but I, I understand the vote that was taken. Right. Okay. So you can put that in all of them, can't you? 
Prioritize it one, prioritize it two, if you want that. Is that what you want? I don't know. I, I don't understand that part of it, so I don't know. I don't, I've got to wrap it around my head. <laughs> no, that's not what we want because the state's going to prioritize. It's not up to y'all, it's up to the state. But these, these grant applications do require a letter of support and yes. they are competitive yes. funds. So this right. would be a way for the board to state that that they wish for their project to be considered the priority project. Your letter for your yes. grant, but right. not for ours. Well, unless that's what the board wishes for me to do. That was not the direction I received. Why would you want to prioritize any of them? Just let him decide them decide up there. I thought that's the way it operated, was that the state decides on where they're going to spend the money. Well, all of our projects that are submitted are submitted with priorities. Okay. So that whether it be those that have already been funded, which we discussed this evening, or whether it be these that we're requesting. Okay, okay. even for these special grants, this is a different grant to the one. I understand this map. Okay. One thing was about the firehouse in Steen Hatch, y'all want everybody to understand. Back when Steen Hatch flooded, it was knee deep in the firehouse. Yes, sir. I mean, and this, this building redoing that firehouse is going to be a, a safety issue for Steen Hatch. Yes, They're going to build the ground up, build a new firehouse there on top of it. It, it, it was, they was having to park the fire trucks up on the highway yes. just, just to have a, you know, well, I, I understand. you need a firehouse down there. I understand. I understand that. But I feel like that all three of them should have the same prioritizing. I don't think you should prioritize one of them over the other two. They should all, they should all have the same chance. Mm -hmm. That's what she's trying to say. We should all have the same chance of letting them decide. Let them decide up there to yes. decide which one. We don't decide anyway. Yep. Well, I don't know. Sometimes, you know, there's a lot of clout here. I've been around a while too. All right. Okay. Comment from the public. Any more comments from the public? Y'all do a good job. <laughs> Thank you for letting us speak. Thank you for being here. Uh -huh. Y'all don't forget about seniors now. <laughs> yeah. And where I am, as long as I work for them, I'm going to fight for them. We just we need to be seniors too. That's right. That's right. We all are seniors and and um <laughs> Okay. Commissioner Newman. Uh, I don't have anything to Commissioner. It's an honor and a privilege for me to serve. What about the mowing? The mowing started, uh, I believe, week before last. And I, um, I, the northern part of the county has been completed. I think um, they're moving north to south, and I believe they're starting on the south end this week. Yeah. A lot of, lot of traffic. This is how it road today. You did? Okay. So the boom axe, from what I understand, has been repaired, and then our new boom axe we're hoping to receive now in August. We are mm -hmm. we are ordering um, an additional um, piece, the mower mats, an additional piece for it that would allow us to add a broom, um, which would help with the reclamation of some of our dirt roads. Do you know why it breaks so much? Is it just because it's old or is it abuse or what is it? I think they're very heavily used. And the problem with the the, the boom at, it's got a lot of, it's got hydraulics, it's just, it's got a lot of pieces and it only takes the hydraulics to go out and the whole machine is down. And it's the same with the, with the graders, um, depending on where it breaks. It could be in the shop for weeks and weeks because they have to tear, like, like one of our graders is in the shop and it's taken weeks because they have to tear the entire back end, rear end apart to get to the one 
the couple of pieces they need to replace. Now, how many graders do we have in operation throughout the whole county? So we have our north end, our south end grader, and then our patch grader. So unfortunately, when you know when we're grading, we really don't want to pull a grader out of service to do the patching because then we get behind on grading, which has a tendency to make people quite unhappy. Okay. Can I ask a question about the mowing? Yeah. There's a lot of chatter or some chatter on Facebook this week. I know there's a whole section of North 19 that's wildflowers. Mm -hmm. And they've mowed from the city limits in, they've mowed that, but from the city limits out, it's this high and higher. And that's not wildflowers, it's weeds. And I don't know team. who's responsible for taking them for mowing. It's DOT. Yeah, okay, can you team. all contact DOT? It looks awful. I can, but I can tell you that not so long ago, I got a request for them not to mow because of the flowers. So sometimes there's not necessarily an agreement of, of when they should mow or not mow. And I don't know if they can just mow at a certain height to not you know, to not cut the wildflowers down. Well, they're, they're dead now. They've bloomed and they're dead. They're very few that are blooming. Right, right. And they're so high that if you pull up to an intersection, you know, a, you, you can't necessarily see. And that's on North see. 19? What's the nearest yes, intersection? North 19. What intersection? I'm not speaking of any particular intersection. I'm just saying it's hard to see over the weeds. Okay. It's really the most annoying now. I drive it every day. And when the weeds have taken over, like you said, they... I had a call this afternoon from a lady <clears throat> that uh, she said she's homeless and that she is living in her car and that uh, her <laughs> husband is in the hospital in Tallahassee uh, having his, one of his legs amputated and um, she said she needed some help and she had called one of the churches and the churches uh, could not help her and referred her to some of us. I don't know if y'all got a call or not, but um, so I asked her where she was and she said she was in her car and she was down at the uh, the, the city's former, uh, where the splash pad is, I guess parked right there. Now, I know a couple of three or four years ago, we had the homeless coalition people from Tallahassee to come down. So what can I tell this lady? She she was wanting gas and she was wanting a night in a motel. And I'll send you the contact list. I'm sure I've got it saved somewhere. Okay. First, I'd like to get back to her and give her a number. Did you get her age? Her age. Her age, she didn't sound like a senior, if that's what you're wondering. Uh, let, me, let me tell you what I, I've experienced this past week. Affordable housing, when we look at the graph, Fort Lauderdale, I mean, Broward County, Pineapple County, the rent was $1,200 this time last year, it's not 16 and one person had a hypothetical said he's making fifteen dollars an hour less than six hundred dollars a week he could not afford a one bedroom apartment working every day <coughs> that's exactly how i went we have an overabundance of seniors is seeking meals they have to choose between their medication their rent their meals and it, it's bad. It really is. And some of them, that's the only meal they'll get. True. I agree. Now, we do have a <coughs> and I don't know, is it left only to the county commissioners to try to do some of this stuff? Uh, who? But uh, when I read that article, I said, so true. You know, we have a lot of people. We yeah, have people working for the county. Making less than fifteen dollars an hour. We have, we do, we have quite a few. And I, I'm hoping and thinking most of them are married. So if the wife working or something like that, or the or the significant others working. <coughs> I'm 
you know, you probably put two 15s together, or two 14s together, two 11s together, and you get 22. But evidently, you know, we, the American dream was to get your wife, kids, and, and buy your little house. You can't do that no more. That American dream is coming. You can look at the national news and see exactly where it's going. The tax money that was intended to help people like what we're just talking about, you look at the news, they send it overseas to countries that hate us. And it aggravates me every time I watch the news to see all the millions and millions of dollars that's being wasted for one thing or another when the people on the street all over this country, every city has got homeless people just like you're talking about, fam. And they have not got a place to stay, but they're going to take our tax money, send it overseas to how long have you been doing that? All your life? Yeah. I've been that way for a long time. And I can that fire to me. What else do I get to come forward to us? Commission. Motion to adjourn.